Start laying down on your backs, knees bent. Let's take a big stretch. And from that stretch, we're going to wrap our knees towards our belly and give them a squeeze. Yeah, often in the morning we feel a little bit uh, tight through the hips, you know, or well, we feel like this, we feel like some movements are um, a little stronger sometimes. It's because we've been lying often in, in fetal position, maybe, maybe you're a back sleeper. And so our muscles have been in, in places for long periods of time. That's contractions or stretches. We're going to take hold of our left knee and extend our right leg up towards the ceiling or the sky and just draw those right toes down towards you. Now for you, that might be a little further away. Um, if it is, just soften your knee a little so you're not taking the strain of holding the weight of your leg. Just allowing everything to soften down towards the floor. So again, deepening that connection. We've been doing that a little bit lately, really deepening that connection to the floor. How can you deepen that connection? Is it by softening? Is it by encouraging a little bit of spreading through the muscles? Is it by actively pressing your body to the ground? Yeah, play around with a little of each. Now we're going to pop that sole of the left foot down on the floor and our right ankle on top of our left thigh and just explore what that feels like as a stretch, a hip stretch this morning. And maybe you can wrap your hands around your left thigh and give it a little hug and flex your feet, right? Maybe. <laughs> maybe that's a little tight this morning. Let's see how you go. Right, how's that releasing down towards the floor? How's that connection now? Has it changed a little? Come back to it, explore it. Are you still connecting evenly down through the back of your pelvis or is there a little more connection down into one side than the other? Can you even that out? Let's slide that right foot off, pop it down on the floor for now. We're just going to extend that left leg towards the ceiling. Now you can, you've got a couple of options here. You can have the right solar foot down on the floor or you can keep it hugged up towards you, whatever feels best. That right knee. And giving that a little squeeze. But we're drawing those left toes down towards us. And really finding the extension down the back of that big feet. Right, and does that mean you need to bend your knee slightly and move it a little further away so you're not supporting the weight of your leg? And it's closer than 90 degrees or 90 degrees or closer to you. It's, it's not quite as heavy, right, because we've got gravity on our side. So just being aware, just being kind. And you're ready for that hip stretch. Let's pop that right foot down on the floor if it's not already. So uh, ankle of the left foot on the thigh. Just exploring that hip stretch from here. And then if it feels okay, hugging that right knee towards you. And how's your body feeling this morning? Right, we're spending this time at the beginning, these movements to really check in. Checking in with how you're feeling, how is your body moving? And remembering that you're, you're all good the way you are. And so any changes that are going to take place are going to take place because you're modifying your practice, right? And yes, we may start to feel more flexible, maybe a little stronger as we practice. But you're really accommodating. Accommodating what it is that your body needs or accommodating your body and giving it what it needs. From here, let's just pop the soles of the feet down on the floor, but bring them out wide. We're going to just explore this movement a little further up the body, this twisting, this stretching. Let's reach our hands out wide in a T-shape and take a stretch. Oh, baby, a yawn this morning. <laughs> and then we're going to rock both knees over to the left-hand side. And my feet are still down on the ground. I've rolled onto the outside edge of one, the inside edge of the other. Bring your gaze out over your right fingers. 
and just explore that lovely stretch of the left side of the neck. But at the same time, pressing the right knee a little further away so that you find that stretch of your waist, side body. I find a lot of, it's a lovely waist stretch this time. Noticing how when you breathe, it makes that stretch a little stronger. Let's bring those knees back to centre. That's it. And then let's bring those knees over to the other side. And gaze out over the left fingers. We're exploring that. Just a gentle stretch through the right side of your neck. But as you press your left knee a little further away from your rib cage, finding a nice stretch down the left side of your body. How is that breath? Has that connection to the floor? Not grounded evenly through the back of the pelvis anymore, are we? So we're, we're exploring that it is a little more grounded into the right side. That's okay, it's all good. And then bring those knees back to center, give them a hug in towards you. Let's rock lightly from side to side. We're going to take that rocking a little um, further and we're going to rock all the way over onto our side and press up to seated. It. It's it. Let's take seated cross legged this morning. If it works for you, if it doesn't, then have those legs extended or sit up on a blanket. Yeah, we're going to rest one hand down on the floor and we're going to reach. The other hand along the front of our mat and up and over, extending the fingers away, keeping those fingers maybe a little further, but really grounding down into the right side and reaching up through the right fingers. That's it. Finding that extension through the side body. Trying to maintain that connection. And if you want to, just bring your gaze up towards your left arm. And just enjoy those nice long breaths. And then when you're ready, back to center. Let's take a stretch with both of our hands, spreading those fingers, palms towards the front. And you reach those arms nice and long without shrugging your shoulders. Give that a go. Let's reach those arms out to the side, palms towards the floor. Can you stretch them a little further? Roll those palms towards the ceiling. And then let's guide the hands down to the floor. We're going to pop that left hand down, sweep that right hand along the front of the mat, and just reach it up and away. Now, in this pose, I'm attempting more to find the line of my body. Right, so grounding down into the right sit bone, reaching those right fingers away, finding the line, and then maybe there's that little lean away if your body allows it. And so that's the that's the um that's my where my awareness rests, finding that alignment, finding that line of energy, rather than trying to bring my fingers all the way down to the floor, right? Because then I'm gonna really fold and bend and hurt myself. <laughs> so just reaching those fingers away. And then let's come back to center again, reach the hands. This time we're going to take fold forwards over the legs. So if you're in cross legged, a fold forwards over cross legged. If you're in a seated, another seated pose, just whatever is working for you today. Rounding down into the sit bones and extending those fingers out long. And each breath we really feel, yeah. Now, often with our breath, when we put too much focus on it, it restricts a little bit. And we are putting quite a lot of focus on our breath during our yoga practice. So today, to deepen the breath, consider deepening your focus on your yielding or your connection to the floor. So bringing awareness to that connection to the ground, deepening that, and then seeing if maybe from there it frees up your breath. Right. But first and foremost, we're deepening that connection to the ground. Everything else will come after. We're going to rise back up to seated. For those of you who are in seated cross-legged, just cross your feet the other way. If you're in another seated pose, maybe you want to change it now to a child's pose or something else. We're going to fold forwards now over the legs and cross-legged, giving our other hip a bit, a bit of a stretch. Now down into the sit bones, you're remaining connected. So we're finding that connection. We're deepening that even as we fold. Because it wants to lift away from the ground a little, right? So we're going to keep it connected and keep that connection.
And then we're here for a couple more breaths. And notice that with each phase of breath, you connect a little differently, right? So as you inhale, maybe you're lifting away from the earth, maybe the opposite is true. And as you exhale, you're finding a deepening, right? Maybe we can bring our awareness to that. Let's come on over to hands and knees. From hands and knees today, we're going to press ourselves straight back into downward facing dog. And then we're going to walk those hands back to our feet so that we're in forward fold on our mat. And from here, we're gonna get some real movement going, right? <laughs> but first, let's take a little sway from side to side and explore this pose here. So what's happening for us here? Right, for me, I'm feeling um, a really nice stretch down the back of my legs, but also right up between my shoulder blades and along the back of the thing. Yeah, and that stretch, I can feel that muscle pulling all the way down, stretching all the way down my spine. Can you feel that or is it really limited to the back of your legs? If it is limited to the back of your legs, bend your knees a little more. Check in. Have you got your belly on your thighs because your knees are bent enough? Yeah. Let that head hang a little. Maybe give it a little movement from side to side. Check if your jaw is soft this morning. Find some space between your upper and lower jaw. And then inhale and rise up to halfway lift, but lift. But we're going to pause here for a couple of breaths. Just strong into the belly. There's a lifted belly here. Yeah. Hard to see that there's a lifted belly because I've turned into one big um, jumper. <laughs> now, the connection here really deeply down into the feet. Can you spread your toes a little? Can you find that connection down into the feet, into the heels? A little softness through the knees, right? You're not locked. And then on your next exhale, soften down into forward fold. And on your inhale, rise up to all chair. Finding ourselves in these poses first before we start to float through them. Sit down a little deeper. Hands into prayers in front of, into prayer in front of your heart space. Strong into the pose. That's it. And then we're going to rise up to stand. Take a few breaths here in Tadasana. Now, the theme of our practice today, or one of the um, ideas we're going to be practicing around, is the idea that we can encourage, embrace challenge. Now, sometimes our challenge is being still, as shavasana, as restful poses, as stretches. Sometimes our challenge is the stronger pose, squat pose, um, um, chair pose, all of these poses, right? And sometimes our pose is tadasana. Tadasana has, was traditionally a pose. Um, that I struggled with my alignment and and so it was one of the poses that I puzzled through. So sometimes our poses that are our challenges are simple poses to other people, <laughs> right? What we're going to do today is consider what it is to step outside of our comfort zone and to push into some challenges or to embrace some challenges, to lean into some challenges. As we do that though, I want you to remember that your aim is not to hurt yourself. If something feels like pain, if something feels like too much, then you come out of it. But if something feels like a challenge, then I want you to see if that's an okay challenge. I want you to see if you can use your breath to make that challenge a little easier to lean into. Right? Because life might be starting to change a little as we consider different things at the moment. And so we're going to use our practice today to practice leaning into challenges. <laughs> yeah. And so we're going to start that with a little flowing sequence. And as we come through that little flowing sequence, perhaps that's your challenge. Yeah, Remaining calm, staying forgiving, even when you miss a step. Because it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if you miss a step. What's really important is that you're remaining calm, that you're moving into these challenges with compassion. So let's give that a go. We're going to inhale, sweep our hands towards the sky and lift our face. Exhale, your hands down into prayer in front of your heart space, rock your weight into your left foot. Inhale, your right foot steps forwards into lunge. Exhale, lower your left knee to hover off the ground. How are we going? Let's inhale and lift that left knee back up. Exhale, lower the left knee to hop up. We're going to come through three of those descents, right? So we're going to inhale, lift that left knee back up. And exhale, lower that left knee to hop up. From here, we're going to step that left foot forwards on the inhale. 
and we're going to exhale our right foot back into lunge. Now, stay here for a breath. We're setting this pose up, finding that length. Now, on your next exhale, lower your right knee to hover off the ground. And as you inhale, lift that right leg back up. Now, so pressing it back behind you, so it's just the knee. As you exhale, lower that right knee to hover. As you inhale, lift that right knee back as you press that heel away. One more time. We're going to exhale, lower that right knee to hover. And then we're going to press that leg back again. Right? Now on the exhale, we're going to step the right foot forward. And we're going to inhale, glide our hands towards the ceiling. Still with me. Let's exhale, swan dive forwards into forward fold. Wonderful. Inhale, come to halfway down. Exhale, back down into forward fold. Inhale, into upper chair. That's it. Exhale, rise to stand. Nice and familiar, yeah? Inhale, sweep your hands towards the sky, lift your gaze. Exhale, hands into prayer in front of your heart space. Rock your weight into your left foot and start to glide that right leg up behind you into area three. We are staying here for a breath. Remember, it's okay for your right toes to be down on the ground. That's all good. Part of your forgiveness, right? Part of your acceptance. We're going to turn this into a warrior two. To do that, we're going to bend that left knee, lock that right foot back behind us, ground down into the outer edge of the right foot, and just glide, float our hands out to the side, sternum squaring towards the side of your mat, reaching those fingers a little wider. Staying here for a few more breaths. And then we're turning this into a little movement, yeah? And it's this one, and we're going to come through it three times. Exhale, left hand to the inside of your left thigh, right arm reaches, right? Inhale, rock back, straighten your left leg, press your left palm towards the back of your mat. Here's one. We're going to exhale, gliding forwards, left knee bends, left arm to the inside of the thigh, right arm reaches. We're going to inhale, rock back, straightening that left leg, left palm presses back. We've had done two. One more. We're going to exhale, gliding forwards, arm towards the inside of the thigh, right arm reaches. That's it. And then we're going to inhale, rock back. This time we're going to stay in this lean back for a breath. Maybe two. Finding the length down the side of our bodies. That's it. Yeah, and then from here, Cartwheel those hands forwards either side of that left foot and step that right foot forwards into forward fold. When you are ready, inhale to halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale to awkward chair. Exhale, rise to stand. That's it. Inhale, hands towards the sky. Exhale, hands down into prayer. Rock your weight into your right foot. Glide that left leg back behind you into warrior pose. Now we're staying here for a couple of breaths, right? Exploring this pose. Round it down into the right foot if you needed to, though. It's okay to have those left toes down on the ground. Squeeze that left glute a little more. <laughs> and then we're going to turn this into warrior two so stepping that left foot back behind you floating those arms out wide finding yourself in this position that's it yeah we remember we're staying here for a couple of breaths so just explore this position that rising up from the tail and out of the crown of the head the mild squaring of the sternum towards the side of your mat and then we have that pulsing movement of three and so it starts here. We exhale back of the right hand towards the inside of the right thigh, left arm reaches, lift your gaze. And you inhale and rock back, just lifting your gaze if you want to, right? Straight in that right leg, lifting that palm towards the back of your mat. Exhale, descend. 
Exhale out to two. Keep bending that right knee. Now we're going to straighten that right leg, press that right palm towards the back of the body. Yeah, and then we exhale back down. Back of the right arm towards the inner thigh. Left hand reaches. This time as we rock back, we're going to pause here. Straighten that right leg. Right palm presses towards the back of your mat. Explore this pose here, this lovely little stretch. Sometimes we lose connection down into the feet through this pose. So still really connecting, still really strongly connected here. And then let's cartwheel our hands down either side of our right foot, stepping that left foot forwards into forward fold. Wonderful. Inhale, come to halfway lift. Yeah, how's this playing around with challenge? Exhale, come down into forward fold. You're feeling all right with it. Inhale, come to awkward chest. And then exhale, rise to stand. And we're staying here in our tadasana, grounding down into the soles of the feet, finding this pose. And so a little flowing movement for this morning. And you regulate your breath to come back into that gentle rhythm. Yeah, and then start to create the sound at the base of the throat, maybe. Yeah, so that this breath is really powerful. But if that doesn't work for you, don't worry about it, right? Because our attention today really is in grounding down into the base of our pose and into leaning into any challenging poses. And so for some of us, the challenging poses are the poses that we hold for a little while. So let's play around with some of those. <laughs> and so from here, from this mountain pose, inhale, glide your hands towards the sky. Exhale, swan dive forwards into forward fold. Soften those knees. Inhale, rise up to, uh, to halfway lift. Exhale, back down into forward fold. Rising up now to awkward chair. And let's just settle here for a few breaths. Feeling the weight of our body down into the soles of our feet the pressure of our body down into the soles of the feet and then just noticing the way that we can create this buoyancy this lifting up and away from that point let's bring our hands into prayer in front of our heart space and feel our feet a little closer squeeze the seams of your legs together sit down a little deeper now and then slowly are you able to glide your right elbow down towards your right thigh Keeping your hands in front of your sternum. Yeah, and maybe the elbow didn't get there. Maybe it was just a journey towards. Or maybe it does rest there. And with your breath, notice the narrowing of your waist. Little squeezing around to the side. Notice as well, are your hips trying to kind of shake around to one side? <laughs> Let's keep them squeezed towards the front. Can you sit a little deeper? Did that ease the pose a little? Right. Did it change the alignment a little? Just staying here for one more breath. Any sensations that you're feeling, if they're challenging sensations, just sit with them, notice them. And don't become them. It's unwind, come back to center and stand. Feet can sit bone distance apart. Find that connection down into the floor through your feet. Stacking the rising up and away from that point. Feel your body settle. Inhale, set your heads towards the sky. Exhale, swan dive forwards into forward fold. Inhale, rise up to halfway lift. And exhale, back down into forward fold. Rise up to your awkward chair. Yes, reach those hands if you can, but soften your shoulders. Does that mean you need to bend your elbows? If it does, then do. Find that connection down into the floor. 
and then hands into prayer in front of your heart space. Walk those feet a little closer. Squeeze the seam of your leg together. As you squeeze the seam of your leg together, right, sometimes our attention is really this wrapping inwards. But can you also engage with the back of your body and take a little squeeze of the muscles around the back of your pelvis, your glutes, your hips, so that now you're wrapped quite tight around the body, around the pelvis. Sit a little deeper. Maybe you can float your left elbow down towards your left thigh and take a little squeeze through the waist. And each breath, maybe you deepen that a little. As we get older, we tend to start to recognize that certain sensations are just fleeting, they pass. Sometimes young children, they don't get that right, and so their reactions are really powerful to things. My little guy got a bee sting yesterday, and he's got a lot better about it because he's had a few now. He understands that the sensation will subside, <laughs> and it is a challenge, but it's not forever. It's just a, a, a moment in his experience. And let's unwind and come back around to center. And let's rise up to stand. Feet come sit bone distance apart. And again, we're just going to settle, right? And so in our practice, we can be holding a pose that is challenging, but we know it's going to pass. We're no longer that little baby brain, that really young brain. It thinks that we're, once we're feeling something, it's forever, we're never going to recover. <laughs> and so just embracing those challenges, leaning into those challenges, where it feels comfortable to, where it feels okay to, it's not always comfortable, where it feels okay to, but always knowing that you've got this quiet space in you that you can return to. You've learned where that space is by using your breath, by using flowing movements, by using... Um, your attention. Yeah. So you hold this place here, this quiet place that maybe you've become quite familiar with over the last few weeks. And so just experiencing it now in your tadasana, noticing that quiet space, noticing that maybe this, those sensations of challenge have started to fade away a little. Let's inhale, sweep our hands towards the sky and lift our gaze. And exhale, swan dive forwards. Now we're going to come to downward facing dog. So depending where you are on your mat, you might be creeping your hands forwards, your feet back, a little bit of both. And then your downward facing dog, pressing down into your hands and finding that connection down into wherever it is that you're connected through the feet. Right? For most of you, that's going to be significantly more through the balls of the there might be a little connection through the heels. But we can connect really powerfully through the hands. So we can press our fingers down. We can grip a little with the fingertips. And we can find that hollowing of our waist. And from here, let's rock forwards into plank pose. Yeah, lower your knees if you need to or want to. And then from there, with your knees lowered or your knees raised, come down onto your right forearm. And your left forearm. Stay here for another breath. And then come up onto your right palm. And your left palm. <laughs> And you come down onto your left forearm and your right forearm. Stay here for a breath. And then come up onto your left palm and your right palm. Bend your elbows. Hover. Lower all the way down. Untap your toes. And here's my real challenge. It's the challenge of this real stretching through the front of my hip flexors, my psoas. We're going to inhale, lift to cobra. And then we're going to bend our knees. And maybe you can reach around and take hold of your feet. We're going to keep it pretty minimal this morning, right? So 
and maybe there's the ability to lift your knees a little and take a stretch. Still breathing. You can stop breathing if you've gone too far. <laughs> Going here for another breath and then releasing everything back down. Let's tuck toes, press down into the hands and come into hands and knees. We're going to pause here, don't press right back into child's pose. Inhale, lift into cow and exhale, coil into cat. Nice and gently with that consciousness. Inhale, lift into cow. And exhale and coil into cat. One more time. Let's inhale and lift into cow. And exhale and coil into cat. But this time we're going to press that cat all the way back into child's pose. Have your sit bones up on a blanket, right? Have your ball rolled up naked underneath you if you need it. Ah, rest your head down on the ground. Just notice. I know that child's pose is the challenge for some of you, yeah. Remember, a challenge is something you can lean into. And so a pose that you can't take anymore for various reasons, various um, things that are happening in your body happened. That's not a challenge to force yourself into a pose that your body isn't comfortable in. Yeah. The challenge is difficult. <laughs> But it's not unhealthy, it's possible, right? And coming back up to hands and knees when you're ready. We're going to press back to downward facing dog. And then we're going to walk our hands and feet together towards each other. So that again, we're in forward fold. Doesn't matter if you're in the front or the back or the middle of the mat. Let's inhale, rise up to halfway left. Exhale, back down into forward fold. But this time we're going to swan dive all the way up to standing. Reaching our hands towards the sky. Lift that gaze. Ah, and then hands draw back down into prayer. Yeah, so that discussion around there are some poses that feel challenging, but they're not possible for your body at the moment, so they're not your challenge. You leave, you leave those. I think the same is true is true as we as we uh, enter back into our new normal life. Is that there are some things that actually we don't want to pick back up again, and that we found that without them, things were preferable. You know? And maybe it's possible to not pick those things back up. So there are some challenges that we don't really want to lean into that aren't working well for us. That might be child's parts, or it might be something that you're doing in your, in your daily life. Right? And so we need to find out ways to modify so that we don't have to take those things. <laughs> We modify so that we don't have to be taking child pose. There are other poses that we can take. So leaning into challenges when they work for you. Having um, having the clarity to work out when that is. Now I'm loving the balance of the walking tree at the moment. So that's the balance we're going we're to take today. I know that balance is a challenging sometimes, right? And I'll start with this. I'll start with the front on walk. <laughs> we're going to rock our weight over and try to push. And we're going to pick up our right foot and see if we can just bring it across the body like a little shiva. So maybe you need to sink a little deeper into that left knee. The left wrist rocks up and over your right ankle. And your right hand is just going to reach behind. Yeah? Now we're going to connect this with the breath, but only if it works. As you inhale, sweep that right leg back, that right arm forwards, and the left leg reaches back. Got it? Yeah? Big step. As you exhale, stepping that forwards, left wrist over right ankle. Yeah? Got it? Let's take that a couple more times. 
So as we inhale, right arm reaches forwards, right leg reaches back. That's it. As we exhale, coming the other way. Nice big step. Let's take it one more time. As you inhale, reach. As you exhale, bring that leg back. This time now we're going to reach down with that left tap. We're just going to pop that right foot on top of that left um, thigh. So just, just adjust that as you need to. And then we're going to become centered in our own abundance. What does that feel like? What does it feel like to know that you're all good as you are? Uh, they're coming from a place where you understand that you're all good just as you are. It makes leaning into challenges a little easier. And so from here, we're going to represent that abundance by sweeping out our branches. But there's a softness in our elbows and our wrists and our fingers because we hold our fruit gently, right? <laughs> We're holding everything that we have gently with respect. And in that softness, we feel our power. You feel the power of your branches here. And you know that even if you need to touch your right foot back down to the floor, you are strong and you are powerful. You are compassionate to yourself. And in that compassion, you don't need to attach to a pose. And so recognize here in your tree, whether your foot is down on the ground or not, that you are strong, you're powerful, and you are abundant. You are deeply connected with nature. Stay here for another breath. And then when you're ready, pop that right foot back down on the ground, rock your weight straight open. Show you a side on now, right? <laughs> We're going to pick our left leg up and we've got our right wrist over the left ankle. It's at that little sideways angle, uh, angle like she does. Left arm reaches back a little. Not too much because we're not in our step. But can you soften down into that right knee? Now on your next inhale, reach your left arm forwards, your left leg back, and your right arm sweeps back as well. And then as you exhale, sweeping forwards again, so that your right wrist stacks over your left ankle, and your left arm reaches back. As you inhale, take that big step. Try you know, not to think too much about it. <laughs> and as you exhale, forwards again. Right, are we ready for one more? Inhale, take that step. And exhale, come forwards again. This time on the exhale, we're going to pop that left solid foot and towards our right thigh. Going towards our right um, car. Or maybe have your toes still down on the ground in your tree. And then glide out those branches. Holding gently and softly. With that wonderful energy rising up away from the earth and then descending back down again through you, connecting you deeply. Recognize again in this pose that wherever you are in it, whatever its challenge, you are abundant. You have everything that you need within you. You are powerful. And you are strong. I 
just noticing that deep connection to the earth. Noticing the powerful rising of your body. Noticing your strength. Let's take another deep full breath here. And then bring that foot back down to the floor so that we're back in standing. This makes a little shake. Now we're taking our shaking, shaking, shaking kind of practice. And I get everything wobbling around. I know that balance is a challenge for some of you. We're leaning into that challenge today. As part of leaning into that challenge today, accept that there are some things that are harder for you. And honor that. It's okay. Your body is all good. Let's get that shake moving a little bit higher up. Right? Who's going to shimmy for me this morning? <laughs> and can we get those hands shaking? Give your head just a real gentle shake, just to check if your jaw is still soft. And then settle, notice, notice that even though you're in a still a pose, you can feel that movement on the skin. Right, right that, another. And then from here, we're coming on down to the floor, coming into a hands and knees position, and we're pressing back into child's pose. Feel that lovely release down through your low back. If you can, rest your head on something. See that rolled up blanket comes in handy. Yeah, or you can have your fist stacked under your forehead. Noticing as you inhale, that tidal pull of your pelvis as it expands. And as you exhale, everything drawing back in again. As you inhale, your ribcage expands, your lungs expand, and your body makes room for the breath. As you exhale, that breath releases back out again. As you inhale, your body makes space for the breath. And as you exhale, you release even anything that doesn't serve you. As you inhale, the body expands. And as you exhale, releasing anything that doesn't serve you. Let's rise back up to hands and knees. Come on around to seated. And from our seated position, we're going to start by just coming straight down to the floor. So lie on your side, back, back down to your back. <laughs> Thumbs of your feet down on the floor. And my feet are quite close to me, right? <clears throat> But that doesn't mean you can reach out and touch them. That's going to depend on how long your fingers are. Also, so many things, right? <laughs> but what we want is we want to even pressure down into the feet. And so that your ankles are stacked into your knee. Can you press down into your feet? Finding your heels, finding the balls of your feet, your toes. And as you press down into your feet, what happened? Did you notice that your pelvis maybe lifted off the ground or started to become a little more weightless? Did you notice that? Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. Did you notice there was a bit of a hollowing through your belly? Keep pressing down into the soles of your feet. Now on your next exhale, knit your belly button down towards your spine. Now as you inhale, can you lift your hips? Keep them lifted. 
and stay here for a couple of weeks. Can you squeeze a little more down the back of your body and lift a little higher? Are you a little more deeply aware of that exhale and that hollowing of your belly? And then let's slowly lower down. Whichever phase of breath works for you. Let's take a little pause here. And then knees towards your belly. Take a little rock from side to side. Keep that rocking going a little stronger. And I rock all the way over to our side and press up to see it. Yeah, because this is where we're going to take our leg extension. So, seated with your legs extended, <clears throat> up on a blanket if you want. If it's easier for you to have your legs at the wall, just have your sit bones nice and close to the wall, and you can extend your legs up the wall. Maybe you've got space to take a little fold forwards between the legs. We're going to settle into this pose for a few breaths, so get comfortable. Get comfortable with your breath. Get comfortable with the sensations in your body. And then just notice, are you sitting just back from the stretch, not really wanting to move into it too much? Yeah, or are you exploring that stretch, that length, but not pushing into pain? Or do you have the tendency to go a little too far? Just in this pose, this is only in this pose, that's all we're thinking about. Just noticing it here. There's been maybe the space to go a little deeper, but you haven't explored that. Or do you need to move out slightly? Is it becoming easier as you get used to this challenge? Let's creep our way back up into a seated pose. One more before we come down to the floor. Legs extended out long. Right, don't need to be pressed together though, just extended out long. Maybe you need a little more space between them. And again, just drawing down into this fold. And noticing, noticing what's happening here for you. You actually have space to go a little deeper. Have you gone a little too far? <laughs> are you enjoying hanging out in your comfort zone or are you enjoying that little stretch that challenge or maybe it's a pose that you don't want to include so notice do you give yourself permission to let it go if it's a pose you don't want to include? Is that because it doesn't work at the moment for your body and it causes you pain? Maybe as we've been here a little longer, you've got a bit more space to descend a little deeper. Notice that.
and let's come back up to seated. And if you like, roll that blanket under the back of your knees. Maybe you want a little blanket under the back of your head as well, get comfy. Maybe you want one over the top of you, like men practicing outside on this lovely brisk morning. And let's come down to the floor. Support yourself down there. Lie down on your back and close your eyes. And notice Notice where you are. Notice the sounds. And then bring that noticing inwards. Noticing the way your breath moves your body, your body moves your breath. Noticing your physical connection to the ground. Is there a way that you can soften and deepen that connection? As you deepen that connection, aware that you have been empowered by the earth, that there is a fluidity to your body that softens and releases you. And that as you soften and release, you feel your bones rise and fall with your breath. And you let go a little more completely. Softening a little more. Relaxing. Surrendering to Shavasana. Again, noticing, noticing the sounds around you. If your day allows you to lie here a little longer, you do if you want to. Noticing your breath, the way it moves your body. And noticing that even though your eyes are closed, you can see little spots of light or color. And hold your attention a little. And then making your way over onto your side. And then up into a seated position. And when you're in seated, come with me through those three mantras, those three I am statements, repeating them after me. 
And if there's someone in the house that can hear you, then all the better. <laughs> and maybe we can positively influence those children into saying great things about themselves, into acknowledging their greatness. And if there's not, then all good as well. When you're ready, just repeat them after me. I am strong. I am abundant. I am powerful. So lovely to have you practice with me today. Enjoy your day. Namaste.